Hello folks, it's Friday, 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 and look at, and it's not unusual, we have had north of there, and we do know that there's volcanoes over there, and that is Greenland, because the little one is Iceland, because they, way when they, years ago, they're smart, and that's what you deal with today, ladies and gentlemen, when you look at that eye that's on the dollar bill, everything always is rev you, not always, but the idea that you look for the twist, because they always twist it, flip the coin, the idea that in order to get people to go to uh, years and years ago to settle, and if you look at the ice is melting at uh, Greenland, okay, they call it Greenland to get people to go there, because it, 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 and it somewhat is on the ports, it is in, in a beautiful area, fishing areas, fishing communities, and I swear I lost it, but it's 4.3 quake, and I think I can get, yes. There we go. So basically we had one right up by the North Pole, okay, a quake. And it's not anything new because we've seen it right on the bottom, which is extensive. I get a little bit more worried when we have something at the South Pole, and there's uh, Greenland, and that should be Iceland. Okay, and then uh, factually we basically recent down in the United States, and then Dominican Republic and Cuba and stuff like that is going over there on the trench. Now the number one thing that gets people's attention when we're at the South Pole and we get something, okay, because that makes the whole wor world shake pretty darn good, okay. That's why the ones on the North Pole are not, to me in my mind, as wild because that's somewhat of a settling. And if we, if you have been paying attention watching the quakes lately, we are on a settlement right now. I mean, it's a little bit less. Now, there is a CME flare that looked like it was going to start up when you look at the data on Solar Artis. Okay, and I'll pull, drag this in and see what they're closest to the South Pole. But we do know, and there, that's what I'm saying, is that you had a 6.2. Let's zoom in on that so you realize that I'm telling you the right number, and you got a 6.2 there. So it's dramatic. And the idea that we've been watching the Antarctic uh I s emailed some data off to people way back after Fuka Fudge up to the idea that, hey, man, the South Pole is going ape poop. And that's our axis. That's our axle. Okay. So once again, I'm not sure if they got 72 hours or what they have on. But this is m no more than about three or four days worth of quakes that we have on here. And actually, then it looks like they're making me lie because if we do show the 8.9, no. So basically now the 8.9 is not on there anymore when I drag it all the way down. So as you know that we have said in the that I have mentioned that the idea this is like three or four days. If anybody wants to make a comment, no. Yeah, but I think we don't know because I think it fluctuates on how many days that they let the amount of quakes be on here. But as you see, I'll basically rotate around here, at least try to. It's fighting with me a little bit. The 8.9 area is missing. Okay. And it was basically, they ended up saying it was an 8.7 or an 8.6, take your pick. And that was over in uh, the south of Indonesia, where we're pretty much looking at. And as you can see, they've been having aftershock after aftershock after aftershock after aftershock in that area. And then we get a, we don't love you message, something. And basically, we know that it's just a typical MS software com deal, but uh, basically it's a bunch of BS because... I don't have too much CPU usage or whatever it was saying. So let me I'll go out and you'll see all the quakes that are. And then the other ones are over on, as you see, I'll drag out and you'll see the tons of quakes. That, now that's the left, Indonesia. I'm out as far as I can. And then over at the ridge. So what's really, I mean, it's structurally, you talk to any engineer when you got that much jackhammer in action and we know what the, uh, the the gulch, well, there's all kinds of names for it, mid Atlantic Ridge, I believe, and so forth and so on, and it's the trench is the main thing that they always call it over by Dominican Republic and Cuba, and there it's all those quakes to the right. And then you got what's going on at Fuka Fudge up in Alaska, okay? And then I can't even drag all of the quakes that are over at Indonesia right now. And that's just within three or four days because, as you see, they took the big ring of the eight point something away. So, and as you see, as I rotate Earth around it and then try to get it to come back a little bit, but there's so many quakes there, and I've got it on as small a screen as I can get. So, there's just tons of quakes over in Indonesia. 
an Indian Ocean and so forth and so on. So pay attention and keep watching to, let me square this up. The basically the number one thing since we have so much going on over at the Dominican Republic which is right there and Cuba and so forth in the trench is to make sure that you pay attention to your rainfall and as we go it'll stretch out and get more quakes in that area. Pay attention to your rainfall in the uh, the new Madrid area and as you see I think the 2.5 is the latest we've had there and Utah had some action and then they had a 3.0 or 3.1 or something like that that's the one that comes up there so there's all your quakes within the last four days or so three four days in the United States so if we get a lot of weight in the new Madrid and yes there has been 7.1 six point somethings and they did since Mexico knows that they don't have structurally sound a lot of buildings, uh, they have been doing quake, uh, you know, uh, practices of evacuate, you know, basically get out of a building. And then people have made uh, YouTube videos, the Kara Soft or Black something, basically corporate dick money uh, to calm everybody down. But if you go and you look at all the quakes that Mexico's had, they've had 7.1s, 7s, 6.9s, and there was a 6 point something off our California coast. And basically, the New Madrid gets a lot of water, folks. You need to really pay attention to your earthquake action if they get a lot of water. I haven't even paid attention to the weather too much. You watch the weather in your area. If you're getting a lot of rain over there in the New Madrid, and remember, you hear a train, get to, uh, get to a safe area because that's a tornado. I'm from Tornado Alley up north and basically you hear a freight train that's a that's a tornado coming at you and if you're used to your trains in your area then you kind of know but don't let it fool you okay uh tornadoes are very dangerous so anyway i don't know what the weather is in your area check it watch your weather and watch your quakes when you get a lot of rain because when you get a lot of weight in your area a plate can slip now the data at asgard basically everything was close except for i believe the last one and we also i'll have you some information on the first one was close then we got uh, the other one is 1.53 IU and then we had uh, the far this one off is more than not almost nine distances of the Sun of ours away away the hell away so let me give you the closest one and basically it'll come up into brackets and you can see it as it moves and there you go they catch it in brackets and there that was and there it comes again and you'll see it get caught in brackets and there you go Okay, so that bugger there was 0 .0 something 15 IU or something away. It's pretty far. It's millions of miles, but I believe it's millions of miles. We don't get into the thousands of miles until it's like point zero zero. Okay, so there was your object there, and there it is. They frame it. JPL, keep an eye on anything. So relax, and yes, West Coast. More than likely in the years to come, somebody could reach out and touch you and talk to you with a missile because even if they, we got going to be patriotic and say, but basically I think the most patriotic thing is to say that the idea that more than likely there's a satellite up 300 miles orbiting Earth, a new one, and it was from that n number three that we've seen over in North Korea. So basically I wouldn't lie to my friends in Cali and say that, you know what, in the next five years or something like that, if they keep letting those sons of bucks trade with people or make or buy stuff from people, they could put something on your sandbox. Now, if anybody in Cali didn't understand what I meant about that, go check this uh, data out here, and also, and basically, just watch this video, and uh, watch all my videos, and watch my last half dozen videos, and you'll understand that the idea that there's all kinds of stuff going on, and no, that wasn't the moon in that shot that I didn't have any audio and the one that I didn't have any audio is night being all black okay uh, basically the moon shouldn't even have showed that much and let me go to uh, and you'll see what the moon looks like right now and the idea that was more than likely Jupiter the same thing that is supposedly IE supposed to have scared a pilot in Canada and made him dive an airplane uh, who knows he might have had 15 spies on his airplane that needed to be shook around a little bit because the idea they're selling secrets to who know who knows but I'm pretty sure he probably just freaked out and thought he was going to run into Jupiter. Okay, so more than likely, I mean, absolutely, that was not the moon in the stuff that I show you on Night Being All Black. Okay, that is not the moon, and everybody even knows it in comments and so forth and so on, and I even show you on the charts. That's why I didn't have any sound. Okay.
Now this is Thatcher and basically this is the data on it and factually that this is what is been a long time ago. Remember they told you that nothing is going to be close to uh, Earth, an asteroid or anything like that, right? Okay, well normally average distance is 82.0 AU, which is all U, 60.92 now. So it's a little closer than so basically back around Thanksgiving time on that one Thursday when NASA started lying to you, they were just trying to calm all the mice or the ants, the small people, the idiots. Okay, so 60 AU and basically nobody is an idiot pretty much. Basically power money control makes people makes idiots because they don't want too many smart people, especially if you don't have a college diploma. And Bino doesn't, and that's why they hate Bino. Because I ain't going to waste my money on something that's really not going to get you a job anyway. It's just going to show you that you're an ass kisser and you pay money to get a job. If you want to pay money to get a job, pay money to get a job. It will make you happy. You can be a person that really can't say what you is honestly on your mind. Because once you start telling the truth about anything, you will get in trouble. Okay? So the configuration of this thing is here you go. we got our map on it. And like I told you, we got Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, and then the idea that we might be in our nice position again now that maybe they can see the stars up behind Pluto and so forth, and Neptune, and Uranus, and so forth and so on. So there is Thatcher, and basically if I think if I work this right, we will get that the idea that there is Earth, along with what we know of the factuality that there is also Mercury right there. I should do get, I believe, Saturn over here or something. Uh, there's another, it's over here you're going to get Venus or Saturn, I believe. Am I going to get it? Am I on the outside enough? Because there's another planet there. So anyway, I'm zoomed in too much. So there's anyway, there's three planets because then, and then the sun is in the well below Earth and everything like that. Not really below. It depends on what you want to call space. But the idea that we know we follow the sun and the sun is deep below Earth there with everything else. And then I th think is, what do we got out here? Saturn, yes. So more than likely we got Venus or Mercury here, or Mars, but Earth is there listed, and then maybe if I go up higher here, they're going to change. So anyhow, that is your configuration, and basically I blew that there up, okay? Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So that's what is in our Asgard at night when you see the nighttime. So in the future we will see if it dies down and it won't. There will probably still be material from the supergiants and so forth and galaxies that basically we got stuff that's melding, okay? And we'll be still seeing some stuff even though this is going to die out. Now 10.30 UTC time is nighttime and as you can see on the live view you get froze at what their last shots they have of the nighttime sky. You, they used to be showing us what was going on in the daytime and you can still actually see stuff, okay? So this is the freshest and it's 10.30 UTC Okay, so basically look at all the light without the moon that we got, and that's because of the supergiants, ladies and gentlemen, because these are all nighttime shots. Every one of these are nighttime shots, okay? And you got the moon, and I'll show you what the moon should look like right now, okay? All these are nighttime shots, okay? So a lot of nighttime light, and it's not, uh, they don't have searchlights, okay? And we ain't lighting up the sky humanistically. It's Mother Nature out there in space. I'll go through the data here real fast, and I think I'll give you a shot of the moon. And basically you just pay attention to your temperature and so forth and so on. Like you see we've moved on temperature again. So a dramatic move like that. And then we got CME, and that's what the moon looks like right now, folks. Okay. So a lot of light at nighttime. And then we got this. And I'll just scroll down on your aurora. You'll see that's off on the south pole there. You can't miss that. Uh, we had a CME that just barely missed Earth that came off. There it's there. You should be able to freeze and watch that. And as you can see, we'll go to the data, and you can still see the sun is doing some interesting stuff there. I don't know if we got the roller marks. We got a less of a roller mark, which is good. But we do know that it was a huge piece that came off of the sun in the last few days. There we got scar marks still. And those pictures aren't very much anything to look at when we go to the right. So we come down here to the data, and we'll see if we're cross-phasing. But the number one, and oh yes, we're cross-phasing, folks. See the cross phase? Okay, and then we'll see the last graph to the right there, flatlining though. And then let's see. Now you've had Java Player and stuff go down and everything like that because basically we got this and we'll blow that up. And basically I'm not, I'm not making blow up anymore, but there's your CME that's starting to, to again do the same heartbeat that we got today. So more than likely this will get possibly somewhere here, or maybe we're getting lucky and it's dying down for a little bit, but it might get back up to C again. High C's close to M. 
And that's when you want to see what's going on with the sun right there. Wild telemetry that aren't even broke up. That's not breakup. That's wild.